This section of the video is going to be focused on arpeggios and I use a lot of arpeggios in my soloing and I have a few different forms that I'd like to share with you. It's a, this is a, a great way to get around the neck and in and out of complex chord changes when you're basically what you're doing with an arpeggio is you're playing the notes of the chord. So for example, if you got a G major chord, playing the notes that are in that chord, which would be G, B, and D, and then the high octave, you know, G again. And then you repeat it. Like that. So uh, I'm going to start off showing you a very uh, simple form arpeggio, and we'll get into the complicated stuff later as we go on. So let's start out here with, uh, with G major. We're going to do it here starting off on the, on the 15th fret and our first finger, our second finger rather, will play the first note which will be a G. And then we have B and then we have uh, D and then G again and then back down. So that's a real simple form for a G major arpeggio starting on the low string. Um, while I'm showing you this form, I'll show you the minor variation too because it's, it's, a, it's a one note difference, which would be the, the, this note here, which is a B. Let's go down a half step to B flat. So you got G major, and you have G minor. Very simple way of playing uh, an arpeggio. All right, now that you have seen that sort of fingering for an arpeggio, I'm going to show you another fingering to play the same arpeggio. Now, this is a, a fingering that I use a lot uh, to get around when I'm doing solos. It's the same notes, except it's a different shape. And this shape allows you to, to achieve different results, which you will notice uh, as this section unfolds. So let me show you this particular shape. So we're starting, instead of with our second finger, we're starting with our third finger. And uh, we're starting on the same string, same note. And of course, if you want the minor note. The, uh, the shape becomes a, a little different because you're taking a B down to a B flat. But essentially, it's the same sort of thing. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to show you later on how valuable this particular shape can be, and you'll recognize it in some of the more complicated licks that I show you later on in the video. I know I showed you the particular shape starting on the sixth string, um, and of course you're going to want to play these arpeggios on other strings, not just limited to starting off on the lowest string of the guitar. But before I show you these other shapes, I also want to make you aware of how easy it is to change these arpeggios around. So for example, um, I showed you a, a regular G major shape. But if you didn't want to, if you wanted to add some other tonalities, it's very easy to do that by simply changing certain notes. Instead of going G, B, D, G, if I simply lower that note a half step from a G down to an F sharp, um, you have a, a whole new tonality just by moving one note. I can move this into a more comfortable place, which would be down here in C. I, 
I, actually, that's, a, that's an exercise I could show you. I'll show you that. We'll use that as an exercise. I just kind of came up with that on the spot. So now this is a very spontaneous video all of a sudden. You have a C major arpeggio. And then we flatten that note. So <clears throat> I'm, I'm going to play that slow so you can see exactly what's going on there. You can obviously do this in a minor form as well. Right? So there's major and minor with incorporating major 7 and minor 7. Okay, so now I've demonstrated to you major arpeggios, minor arpeggios, major, and, major 7 and minor 7, um, all based upon starting on the low string. Um, and also, before I forget too, there's another, in the other shape, the second shape that I showed you that starts from the low string, this one, and we'll move it down to C major where we were a minute ago. You know, remember that shape I showed you earlier? Well, it's just as easy to make that like a, a major seven. And it's major seven because I'm adding the seventh note of the, you know, of the scale, which is a B. No. No, that sort of thing. You'll I'll explain more of that later. I just want you to understand that basic shape there. And how easy it is to make it to a major seven or a dominant seven just by moving notes around. And I don't want to get into a theory thing here, but that's basically touching on how these forms can easily, easily be maneuvered and transformed into other tonalities that are very valuable for soloing. I, I want to get us off of this lower part of the neck here. We so, we so far have been focused on arpeggios that are starting on the low E string. Um, to do it starting off, to play them starting off of the, the next string, the, sh the, the form and the shape doesn't change. See? So it doesn't change. But once you get to the fourth string, it changes because of the way the guitar is tuned. So for example, to play a G major arpeggio, one way of playing it off the fourth string is to start this way. And then to make it minor. You just drop that note down. So you have major and minor. And then uh, once again, you know, you can also do what I showed you earlier by adding other notes, make it major seven, for example, which would be like this. Which is actually the same shape as this shape, but because of the way the guitar is tuned, it sounds different because you're playing different notes. So I'll let you mess around with those shapes and you can discover some other arpeggios on your own. Uh, and also, um, you can start off uh, playing from the third string, so you're not only limited to starting from the, the fourth and the fifth and the sixth string, and those shapes change once again. And let's keep this consistent. We'll keep it in G major, and I'll show you another shape. That's basically a G major arpeggio. We're not starting on the root, though. We're starting on the third string, but we're actually starting off of the fifth degree of the scale, which is D. So we have this sound and that shape. And to make it minor, once again, you simply drop down the third, and you have a minor arpeggio. <clears throat> if you would like to play the arpeggio starting from the root, then that's a whole other shape off the third string and you would have to move up to G on the third string, which is at your 12th fret, and you would play this. And then you 
have a G major arpeggio starting from the root. I'm going to show you now um, an exercise, basically. and We're going to string together the first arpeggio shape that I showed you starting on the low string. And it's kind of like a little chord progression that we're going to follow, which will be D major, B minor, C major, and G major. So we'll have three major arpeggio shapes and one minor shape. And it'll sound like this. Okay, now I'll slow that down so you can hear what it is that I'm playing. And sometimes it's hard to, uh, to play that real clean, so what you want to do is practice it slow, which sounds like this. getting a hammer on. This is, we got pick, pick, and then that's our hammer on. And then it's two picks again. And a pull off. And then it starts over. And actually we find a lick in there, don't we? We have this sort of thing go back and forth like that, sort of like a Woody Woodpecker sounding thing. And then once again, you can speed it up. Now also what I want to show you is that that just shows you how to jump around also on the starting off the low string. But I want you to be aware of the fact that you don't always have to do that because you have all these other notes that you can utilize. And for example, uh, you can start off on the D here. I'm showing you how to play this lick, you know, all starting off the sixth string, but these positions don't change when you go to the fifth string. So. I'll show you how to go from D major to B minor without having to make such a large jump, and that would simply be by moving this D major down here. It's the same notes in the same octave, but now when you go to the B minor, you don't have to jump as far. to the G, the high one. So you can maneuver and you know move these around. That's basically a good little exercise for you to practice to get familiar with that sort of playing style. So now I'm going to show you another exercise very much like what we just did, only starting with the other shape that starts from the fourth string. We're going to start out with one minor and two major. That being the minor one. Major. Another major one. So we got... Okay. 